So this is just what we talked about with um, the resistance. We can see that uh, the extra mucus and then the sort of the plugging, so we call it the mucus plugging, that it can just completely block, um, completely block the alveoli. So that's when we talked about with asthma patients when we have a silent chest is that when it's just completely blocked, you're not gonna hear anything. You're gonna hear the wheezing, and then you're, gonna, then you're not gonna hear anything. Um, so asthma assessment, um, so it can be slow onset or fast onset. Um, slow onset, you know, especially, you know, people right now in California with, with all the wildfires. People who have, you know, asthma and have, have, you know, dealt with it for a long time are, you know, pretty familiar with, with you know, uh, what's going to exacerbate their asthma, especially, you know, come springtime with allergies and that sort of stuff. Um, they can, you know, they'll start off with like, yeah, you know, I just feel a little extra short of breath. I can't walk, you know, a full flight of stairs without feeling a little short of breath. All right, let me increase, you know, my inhaler and that sort of stuff. A lot of times when we run into these patients um, is, you know, they run out of their inhalers. And they think that they'll just be able to sort of tough it out. And then, you know, they call after, after you know, three days of, you know, just feeling nonstop short of breath. And it gets progressively worse and worse and worse. They're not able to turn around on their own. Thank you. You're out. I'm headed out. Yeah. Now I'm ready. Later. Okay. Does anybody have a lighter? I got, oh, I got a lighter one. I, was, I, got a, I got a lighter one, Troy, if you need to. Oh, good. Um, so deterioration over six hours to several days. Um, so usually triggered by upper respiratory tract infections. Um, so yeah, you know, you're, what's that? So do you have a key to, you don't have a key to any of the rooms, maybe. Huh? The lab, the lab room, do you have a key to that? Yeah. You do? Okay. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I just left something in there a few days ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, it can be, so asthma can, can definitely be triggered by, you know, just a, just a virus. Um, so, uh, allergies, you know, catching up a respiratory infection um, can, can all just sort of cause, cause an exacerbation. But, the rapid onset. Um, so, usually triggered by allergens, exercise, stress, um, you know, your these are these are just going to be the really scary ones that you know uh, they need their inhaler and they don't have it, or you know, like we said, little kids. A nebu uh, an inhaler is basically like a miniature nebulizer. Is that about right? Um, that so? so it's it's can be it's some different medications, um, but yeah, a lot of times you know the the meter dose inhaler is sort of so it's, it's a lesser form of the nebulizer. Um, rapid onset asthma more likely to result in death. Be prepared for the patient to develop respiratory failure or respiratory arrest. Um, critically ill patients require positive pressure ventilation with supplemental oxygen. Um, with these patients with asthma, it's it's really not an issue with, with getting the air in. The, the constriction really limits the air getting out. Um, and so that's why these patients are, are very difficult to manage from, um, you know, on a ventilator um, because they, Basically what happens is they take the breath in, they can't get it out, and they need to breathe in again, but they can't because the lungs are still full from the last breath. So that, and then they can't, and then their diaphragm tires out, and so then they just can't breathe anymore, and they, they, they crash fast. Um, so that's why, you know, for, for these patients, um, you know, You'll have a patient who's crashing in front of you, and their their pulse ox will stay, you know, 95, 96 percent um, until really basically at the very end. So it's a problem getting the air out. Um, so uh, allowing sufficient time for exhalation provides positive pressure ventilation. So um, you know, from from you know an ALS standpoint, basically what we do is we we basically have to sedate them. We, we intubate them and we sedate them to the point that will allow them, their body to just relax and we can push all the air out through this tube. Um, the issue very rarely is, is getting, getting the air in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, if you're ventilating these patients, you are going, it's going to be very difficult. Um, you're going to have a lot of resistance trying to, trying to ventilate these patients because
because their, their lungs are already filled with air. So that's why you really need to get these, these beta-2 agonists, the, the meter dose inhalers or the nebulizers on board as fast as you can so you can let the airways open up and get the air out. Um, and that's why you know CPAP can be can be really useful because you're you're slowing down the exhalation to sort of let everything slowly out, so you're not just sort of trying to slam everything out. Um, unfortunately, you know it's it's these are these are very very difficult patients to manage. Um, pneumonia. This is just uh, infection. It's 1935. You guys get our 8 uh, 830, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take five minutes.